Hi, I'm Tracy Badua, author of This Is Not a Personal Statement. Happy World Read Aloud Day. I wanted to read a selection of chapters one and two of my book. It's about a girl who does not get into her dream college, but decides to go anyway. That means crashing classes, sneaking into dorms, making a few friends, all to gain intel so she can reapply in spring semester. Then nobody will know she never got in. Chapter one. A low current of joy and despair from the latest college admittances and rejections hums through Monteverde High. Once the last bell rings, the entire senior class whips out their phones for news. Conversations crackle around me on the parking lot curb. I pretend to focus on spotting dad's Lexus among the dozen other luxury cars in the distance, but it's hard not to react to the bursts of happiness and heartbreak around me. Two other seniors, Edie Anderson from my PE class and Camilla King Jansen, the daughter of one of dad's law firm partners, paused near me on the way to their cars. Did you hear? Wendy got into Stanford, but Gabriel didn't. Do you think they'll break up over this? Hard-earned futures are being made and broken this very second, and people chatter about them like they're reality show bombshells. I adjust my backpack straps as an excuse to angle toward the murmured conversation. Edie and Camilla don't seem to notice, or if they do, care. Being the lone 16-year-old at Monteverde and a tad well-known for my overachievement, my mom sent a press release to the local paper when I started high school at 12, means that I'm blocked out of the social scene and its related whisper networks. But I do like to stay informed. At most schools, gossip would center around who's dating whom, who has the most expensive this, and the flashiest that. At Monteverde High, I attend one of the most academically competitive schools in California. People spend their life savings on dilapidated houses in this school district so their kids can come here because our grads go on to be governors, CEOs, and all manner of bragworthy intellectuals and notables. Everyone talks about the record-shattering achievements of the Monteverde student body. No one talks about the intense competition, the unhealthy lack of sleep, the grueling lineup of forced extracurriculars, the expensive standardized test prep classes, or the underground market of cheat sheets and pills. But I don't care about any of those right now. They're as much a fixture in my school life as my creaky locker and my wobbly chair and AP comp sci. I don't even really care about Wendy or Gabriel. I care about which school's acceptances are out. Now I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Um, Perla gets picked up from school. She heads home with her dad and she hears that a few school acceptances are out, including that of Delmont, her dream school. Dad's still on his call when we pull into the garage. He heads inside to continue his negotiations away from the noise of lawnmowers and children and cars whizzing by way above the 25 mile per hour speed limit. I beeline for the mailbox. I know I got in, but anxiety swirls in my stomach as I pad across our immaculate lawn anyway. I wipe my clammy hands off on my jeans and tug the metal mailbox door open with a creak. I pull out a handful of envelopes. Bill, bill, credit card offer, Delmont. My heart stumbles over its next beat. The envelope is thin. I blink to make sure I'd read the return address right. Yes, it's there in neat printed text. And yes, that's the blue and green Delmont seal printed in the upper left. I bite my lip. Why is the envelope so thin? I don't have any frame of reference for paper acceptances. Maybe Delmont's envelope is supposed to look like this. Delmont might have decided to save some trees by referring accepted students to materials online. That must be it. How very eco-friendly of them. My hand shaking, I reassemble the stack of mail and head inside. Dad nods, cell phone held flush against his ear, when I plop the rest of the mail down on the already mail-cluttered kitchen table. I poise to sprint up to my room when he lays a hand on my arm. We're the same shade of not enough time in the sun, brown, thanks to us spending all day indoors. Even our limited free time together is movie theaters and restaurants rather than beaches and hiking trails. His dark brown eyes fix on the Delmont envelope in my hand. He squeezes my arm, flashes me a grin, then refocuses on his phone call. My heartbeat erratic, I take the stairs two at a time up to my room. I nearly trip on the top step I'd crossed a thousand times before. Backpack down, door shut, envelope in hand. 
I launch myself onto the bed, ruffling the light pink pillowcases, sheets, comforter, and two stuffed bears, Bip and Bop, perched on top. Other than the laptop on my desk, my room hasn't changed in years. It's the room of a bright-eyed 11-year-old who picked out a daisy rug because it looked like something she'd seen on TV. I tuck my legs underneath me and grip the envelope. I turn it over and slide my finger under the seam, earning myself a paper cut as I rip it open. I ignore the smart of the fresh cut and unfold the paper. There it is. The Delmont seal in all its glory at the top. Then, dear Miss Perez, we regret to inform you that. No. No, no, no. We are unable to offer you a place in our fall class. The oxygen disappears from the room. I feel like I've been flung into space, breathless, unanchored. The words on the page blur as the tears start to burn in my eyes. Unable to offer me a place? That can't be what it says. Because I'm supposed to get accepted into Delmont. I get in. That's what's written in blotchy blue ink and Pearlie's academic plan in the book downstairs. What's tattooed on my soul. Delmont is the next big stepping stone in my heavily mapped out future. I get in. This damn letter is telling me otherwise. Thanks for letting me give you a quick preview of my books and happy World Read Aloud Day. You can find more about me and my writing at tracybadua.com.